larger is more efficient. One large colony produces more honey per bee than two smaller colonies, even when the combined population of the two is equal to the one larger. So our objective in early spring is to have colony population sizes maximize before the honey season begins. If they don't, bees will use the incoming nectar to increase their populations instead of storing it as surplus, which we can harvest. The queen's egg laying begins in January and accelerates when the early pollen and nectar sources begin to bloom. In Georgia, this happens in February. Further north, it may be as late as April. Eight weeks later, the colonies should be congested with bees, ready for the first major nectar flow of the season. Congestion is also the greatest stimulus for swarming. The word swarming is often misused to describe many kinds of behavior. Actually, it's a very precise term for a type of reproductive behavior which begins in early spring with the rearing of daughter queens. When the first of these queens is ready to emerge, the old queen is banished and flies away from the colony accompanied by up to 60% of the workers. This flying swarm settles on something such as a tree branch, later relocating to a permanent nest, often in a hollow tree. It is an interesting dilemma in spring management to encourage rapid population growth while at the same time trying to discourage swarming. Young queens seem to suppress swarming, so some beekeepers requeen every spring. Oh, by the way, don't tolerate a marginal queen. If she is not producing adequate brood, replace her. If you are using one-story hives, you can discourage swarming by providing more honey supers above the queen excluder. And if you're using two-story hives, you'll probably find most of the bees in the upper body with little activity below. For some reason, bees will rarely move downward to reoccupy the lower super. So from their perspective, they're congested. The remedy is to simply reverse the supers, putting the lower one on top. Another way we can control swarming is to split congested colonies. And this works with both one and two story hives. Transfer two frames of brood, two frames of honey and pollen, and the attached bees into a vacant hive body. Add a new caged queen and move this split off colony at least two miles away from the parent so the bees won't drift back. A few weeks after splitting, you'll probably have to equalize the colonies. Working hives so that they are relatively equal in the number of bees and the amount of brood strengthens weaker colonies and gives us more uniform honey producers. One way to equalize hives is to move frames of brood from the stronger colonies into the weaker ones. This may have to be done twice, once in early spring and again before the major nectar flow. A second method is to swap locations. Simply move a weaker colony into the location of a strong one. Returning bees will bolster the weak colony. 
There are various reasons why colonies will not have equal amounts of brood and bees. Colony weakness may indicate an inferior queen, tracheal mites, varroa mites, disease or starvation. It is at this time of year, when the overwintering honey supplies are nearly depleted, that the bees face the greatest risk from starvation. Make sure your bees have plenty to eat in early spring.